chapter 10. Facing the Mountain I will start with an article from my archives which the Holy Spirit gave me many years ago. It was titled, Christian Power and Wisdom. A number of three Christians who knew their place in Christ were faced with the same level of storm. Below were their reactions. Christian 1 commanded a camp to come over him, to shield him from the storm until the storms passed. Christian 2 commanded the winds to raise him up high above the storms, which happened, and he soared above the storms until the storms passed. Christian 3 saw the storm approaching him vehemently from afar, but with a loud and authoritative voice, he cried, Peace! Be still! The storm obeyed and became calm. Look inward at yourself and tell me which category of Christian you belong to. Be honest with yourself. It's easy to fantasize and wish you belong to the level of the third Christian. But this is always not the case. The fact remains that they were all Christians. They understood faith and the authority they carried, but they functioned at different levels of understanding and revelation. The first Christian used the word as a defense, building a shelter around him in the storm. Even though he was in the storm, he was protected. But the activities were limited as long as the storms continued, even though he used the authority he had, but still put himself at the mercy of the storm. Deprived revelation deprived this Christian of complete victory as he still had to endure the storm. The second Christian also used his authority of the word to evade the storm. He had a better understanding than the first Christian to know that it was not advisable to be in the storm while it lasted. He called on the winds of the same storm. In this case, he was not affected by the storm. Instead, he used the same storm as a standing stone, as a stepping stone to have his victory. Even though the storm moved for years, he was unaffected. His actions were permissive, but not perfect. He made a compromise that paid off, but still, it was a compromise that could have been avoided all the time. Of all the three Christians, it was pretty obvious that the third Christian really did the perfect job. The first Christian was good, the second Christian was permissive, but the third was perfect. The third Christian saw the storms, just like everyone else, but he had a certain wisdom and understanding that the others did not have. One was in the storm, but was not affected. The other was unaffected by the storm, but allowed the storm to pass. The thought knew something the others didn't. If he endured or evaded the storm, but still allowed the storm to pass, even though he wouldn't be touched, the storm would affect other people. The thought Christian chose to walk in love. Not being selfish, he took the place of an intercessor and rebuked the storm, meaning the storm would not affect him or anyone for that matter. The greater our walk with God is, the greater commitment we will have, not just to us, but to those around us. To whom much is given, much is expected. This is what a lamp does. It does not just light up itself, but it lightens all around so that people around the lamp will be able to benefit from the light. We are the light of the world, not the light of your room or the light of your family alone. You are to reach out to everyone, whether you know them or not. This is the real Christian ethics for us to live.